Now, at the age of 17, our next guest began to research his first cosmetic procedure after becoming inspired by the lives of the rich and famous. Uh, since then, Justin Jedlicker has spent over a million dollars and undergone a thousand separate cosmetic surgeries in his quest for physical perfection. Uh, he is the original human Ken doll, uh, and Justin joins us now. Good morning, Justin. Good morning, Justin. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It's good to have <laughs> you with us. So, Justin, tell us, let's go way back. Tell us about your first operation and why did you decide to, uh, to have it done? Why did you decide to go under the knife? You know, when I was younger, I always had a lot of anxiety surrounding my nose. I thought that it was large. And by the age of 14, I knew that it was something I wanted to fix. Um, I was always very enamored with wealth and with celebrity. And those iconic people that I looked to as a child were definitely Michael Jackson, Joan Rivers, Dolly Parton. And the one thing that they had done very much so was over stylized their look as they became more wealthy and more well known around the world. So I think that that sort of started my enamorment with plastic surgery. Um, um, was sort of looking to the future and sort of the person I wanted to become, the people I wanted to attract. And when I was 17 years old, I visited three doctors. I chose one and asked my parents to sign off on it so I could have that surgery because I wasn't of the age of consent. And they turned me down. So I had to wait until I was 18 and I had prepaid that surgery. And that was the first of five total nose jobs that I've had now. And what about the more extreme surgeries that you have? Because I know you do more extreme, and I know a lot of surgeons like to do work for you for free because obviously they're going to get some publicity as well. And I was just wondering, do you think the fact that they want to perform these surgeries is the reason as to why you do more and more and more? <laughs> well, you know, I think for me, um, after my first nose job, that was that was definitely a need for me, the first. And everything yeah. after that has been a want in my life. I know I didn't need it. I've never felt like my body looked less than or was dissatisfied necessarily with anything except that nose that I was born with originally. It really, for me, has become a quest in my artistry and my creativity, um, where for me, it's a, an expression of the things that I find beautiful, not necessarily what Western culture has dictated as beautiful. And I've been the first person in the world to undergo three-piece shoulder implants, to undergo four-piece back implants, and now to go to go undergo eight-piece leg implants. So these are all groundbreaking new surgeries that had never been attempted before. Um, and I conceptualize those surgeries. I pitch it to doctors to work in tandem with them. And then I custom design those implants. So I think as a pioneer and an innovator in the field of plastic surgery, there hasn't been anyone else really like me that's forged forward really as their own guinea pig, if you will, for these procedures. And I think that other forward-thinking, cutting-edge doctors uh, are very much intrigued to work with me on trying to explore something new, albeit experimental. And yes, of course, there is always that interest with television shows to pose the more extreme side of plastic surgery. And um, the number of cosmetic procedures definitely makes headlines. So there is definitely that want for you to do more when it comes to media to pose that intense controversy. And have well, you... Oh, sorry. sorry. I was just going to say, has anybody ever done some surgery on you I thought, oh my goodness, I do not like that. And you've wanted to fix it straight away. <laughs> Um, you know, there's definitely been little uh, downfalls here and there where it, if things didn't go 100% correct or even 90% right. Uh, I try to find the silver lining when it comes to those procedures where there always has been something I've learned and educated myself from that. Um, and yes, I have had multiple revisions on different areas for some of these experimental procedures, if you will. And we understood that undertaking them from the beginning. And I say we, meaning myself and the doctor, that, you know, if things weren't, uh, to my liking, I guess, to a tune of about 90 percent, uh, then we would go back and revisit it until I was happy. And, you know, I think that I have a very clear picture of what it is I'd like things to look like when we start. But I do also have a realistic expectation and can accept that we can only get but so close to perfection. Justin, I suppose, I mean, you, you live in a town and uh, which, which I think most people watching this wouldn't really relate to this and, uh, and understand... <laughs> The world you live in and you know it's your world you're not doing anyone any harm you're spending your own money it's your choice yeah. do you see it at all do you do you, do you understand do you, do you see it at all as an addiction to, to plastic surgery you know i i i 
kind of disagree with that statement just because I do feel like plastic surgery is something that's rampant currently throughout the world. I mean, it's a, we're talking a billion dollar business It's in, 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 in your country as well as mine. I think that not everyone is quite as verbal and vocal with their attempts to modify or regain youth. Um, but I do think that I, I'm potentially I am a little bit of an extremist when it comes to trying out new things, but it always takes somebody to be the pioneer, to be put out on the cross, if you will, to be able to be seen and to be able to let other people know that potentially something new and different is available, right? If we just allow things to stay the same, then there's no growth in that industry. And I think the things that I've done have allowed other people, the door to be open for other people who potentially need reconstruction, people who aren't necessarily just seeking cosmetic enhancements, but who are also like trying to fix something that let's say is a birth defect or they've had an accident. And the things that I've done can be used in those cases to better help people become adjusted to their lifestyle. Um, we're just looking at some pictures of you. You look absolutely incredible, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> What's your intention you. to look like Ken the doll? Listen, I mean, I started having plastic surgery at the age of 18. No media was released with me prior to the, to the I was probably 28 or 29. And, and that happened super organically. You know, I did a photo shoot with a gentleman who wanted to take photos of people who remade themselves to their own tune of what they found beautiful, not necessarily what Western culture dictated as beautiful. And I was part of this Calfee table book that he put together. And I did a segment on 2020, this investigative journalism show, and they called me the human Ken doll. Um, and the rest of the piece is about going to extremes and people just assimilated the two. I can't say I have disdain for the name, but in a way it does sound, make me sound a little bit superficial. And I think people are sometimes scared that I could be a bit narcissistic with the expectation that, that I would expect other people to be perfect. And in fact, that my quest is one of perfection because I don't really feel that way. I love continual modification modification in the process of body modif modification as an artistry. So, I mean, I definitely think that it has merit in, in a multitude of different ways. Justin, you have your own consulting firm helping people who want to have surgery. Um, yes. Do you always advise it or do when people come to you, do you ever assess someone and go, do you know what, maybe this isn't for you, maybe, maybe you won't get validation through this? Yes, I opened uh, my consultation firm because I had so many inquiries from people after I started doing media about where they could get implants like mine or how they could find doctors that I thought were the best or the most cutting edge currently. And so that was my way to be able to give back and also to be able to start a career that just organically kind of began, right? So there have definitely been a very few select people that when they came to sit down with me and express their concerns about different areas of their face or their body, and I couldn't see them myself, I would probably say those people suffered from something that we would typically consider body dysmorphia when, when a, a person or a client of mine would come in and see a defect or have built a defect in their brain when in fact there wasn't one to the majority of people. And in that sort of a case, I really couldn't give any sort of a referral or advice to them as far as how to go forward because no other plastic surgeon that I could think of would even work on those people. So it's rare that that happens, but it definitely does exist, yes. I, ha I have had to deal with that. Justin, have you got any advice for someone who is a friend of mine who thinks they're absolutely amazing and they don't need any surgery whatsoever? Have you got any advice for that person um, because they've got a really big head and they just think they are number one and so, so amazing? <laughs> have you got any advice I, for them who do, they do really don't want to have surgery even though they probably I should? I think good for them. <laughs> I, no, no, no. I, the last thing I would ever do is want to instill, instill doubt in someone's brain right. and if someone has a great great sense of confidence, then I, I say more power to them. I'm the last person here to tell anyone that they need to have plastic Aww. surgery. That's been a great tool for me in my life, but it's not everybody's path. Fair enough. Thanks, Justin. It's nice so to lovely you. to meet you. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Aww. Okay, bye-bye. Who's it's the friend? amazing. Who is the friend? I don't know. This girl, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to name names. <laughs> no. no. Uh,